It's a huge honour to be made a fellow of ISFAL. This is a really important society to the field of fatty acids and lipids and to me personally. And to be recognised in this way by the society is very humbling. I think it gives some uh, recognition of the work that I've done and my group has done in omega-3 fatty acids in particular, but also in other fatty acids over a long period of time. And it's really great that uh, the society recognises our work in this way. I first became interested in omega-3 fatty acids in 1987, when as a new postdoc, I went to the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Oxford, and I was assigned a project to look at the metabolism of fatty acids in macrophages. At that stage, I knew very little about fatty acids, so I had to do a lot of reading on the subject. And I came across really interesting papers on omega-3 fatty acids, and I thought I would include omega-3 fatty acids in my studies of fatty acid metabolism and the macrophage. It turned out this led to a path of research which continues to this day, because in those early experiments of omega-3s, I found that they were able to influence basic functions of macrophages, like phagocytosis, adhesion to surfaces, and so on, and that the properties of omega-3 fatty acids were very different from the properties of other fatty acids, particularly saturated fatty acids, but also omega-6 fatty acids. So this led to a whole research program over the years comparing omega-3 fatty acids with other types of fatty acids. My work on macrophages led on to work on T-cells and, uh, and I was able to identify differential effects of omega-3s on T-cells, particularly on cytokine production by T-cells and T-cell proliferation. And I linked those effects on T-cells to differences in membrane incorporation of fatty acids and membrane fluidity. These early in vitro studies ultimately led to animal experiments and then on to human experiments. And as I say, into a lifetime of research interest in these interesting omega-3 fatty acids. I think many of our most important findings on omega-3 fatty acids, particularly with regard to inflammation and immunity, come from the early in vitro studies. So I was able to describe the relationship between omega-3 fatty acid incorporation into macrophages and the ability of macrophages to phagocytose different particles and went on to look at omega-3 fatty acids in T-cells linking the ability of omega-3s to influence T-cell proliferation to changes in membrane fluidity of those cells. I was also the first to show that omega-3 fatty acids directly affect cytokine production by T-cells. These early functional studies led to more mechanistic investigations, and one of my PhD students was able to demonstrate that omega-3 fatty acids influence really early signaling events in T-cells, including the phosphorylation of the important signaling protein phospholipase C gamma-1. And in the paper describing this effect on the signaling process, we predated the later discovery of lipid rafts with our explanation for how omega-3 fatty acids might affect signaling in T-cells. In addition, we made very important discoveries around the influence of omega-3 fatty acids on, heat, on adhesive interactions. Again, studying macrophages, this time taken from animals fed different diets, including a fish oil diet, providing a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, and how well those macrophages would bind to endothelial cells, a very important adhesive process initiating inflammatory responses and also the development of atherosclerosis. So we were able to identify effects of omega-3 fatty acids on key adhesion proteins and on the adhesive process. Finally, I think in human studies, some of our work looking at the dose-dependent and time-dependent incorporation of EPA and DHA into different pools in the body, including blood lipids, blood cells, and also tissues, has been really important in terms of defining dose-response relationships to omega-3s and how they might affect human health outcomes. Of course, research in omega-3s has been going on for decades now, and we know so much now about the effects of omega-3 fatty acids and their mechanisms of action. But of course, there are many new discoveries that await us in the future.